Good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up. Wake up here, guys. Wake up. There you go. How you guys doing on this Thirsty Thursday? Um, I am trying to keep myself busy. You know, COVID sucks. COVID sucks because you need to be careful who you're, you're you know, people that you're around and so on. And um, with my brother passing and having to deal with getting all that stuff together and wanting to console and be with people. You can't really be with people the way you want to. Um, you know, my parents are, you know, are, are in their early 80s and we're trying to get this stuff together. So I'm trying to keep that social distance and things. <clears throat> and I appreciate everybody and sympathize with everybody because I'm not the only person that's lost somebody. You know, um, a lot of us have been feeling pain and have lost loved ones and so forth. And my heart goes out to everybody because, you know, um, there are no words. You know, everybody says, is there anything I can do? There's nothing you can do. But think about the good things that you have about somebody, the memories that you have. Because as long as you have those memories, you know, that person will live on forever. My brother... Um, there's two things I always equated him to being was an educated fool. <laughs> you know, he's got book smarts, but no common sense is what I used to always say jokingly. But he was also like a modern day Grizzly Adams. Wherever it was, be it Colorado, Alaska, Hawaii, or Northern Neck and stuff, he basically built him a shelter and he was living off the land. Be that bison hunting, elk hunting, or... <clears throat> salmon fishing or skin diving in Alaska. I mean, it's not in Alaska. No, it's too cold. But Hawaii or planting oysters in the bay and crabbing and fishing. He literally lived the life that most of us wish we could have. You know, he never really worked a, a job job too much or for too long. He found a way to live his passion every day. And I can guarantee you that he had no regrets and regrets in what he was doing. So I suggest that we all do that. You know, there's no guarantees in life. Make sure you make the most of every day. And take your small victories and enjoy them. And I feel like I got a small victory, a little piece of something here. Because this week, you know, for the Cowboys, we haven't had much to be happy about this season and this year, in fact. Not much to be happy at all. It's been, <laughs> this year has been a gut punch. It's been getting your key teeth kicked in. So you've got to take solace in the good things that you do have around. And we do have some good things. It seems like my Dallas Cowboys finally have learned something. That the press has finally learned something. Because for year after year after year, I have been screaming from the mountaintops about one thing that I want the Dallas Cowboys to do. And that is be concerned with the guys in the middle of the defense. We didn't gone through and we got cornerbacks. We paid big money getting those guys. We didn't got outside edge rushers and things. We looked at linebackers and things. But when it comes to like one technique, guys, it's kind of meh. Who cares about the fat guys? You know, it's kind of like you got a Ferrari and you try to drive it on a dirt road. It don't work. It's too low to the ground. Those bumps are going to destroy it. But what you got to realize is those ugly, nasty, mean guys in the middle that you take for granted are the ones that win football games. I said it years ago when, when Calais Campbell was a free agent in with the Cardinals. I said if there's a guy to get that will make that team that much better, it's Calais Campbell because you need that guy that can get the penetration on the defensive line that can get up field and disrupt everything. Because I've said it over and over and over again. You get your biggest bang for the buck from the guys in the middle because they help every single layer of the field. Every layer. 
You get that guy in the middle who's disrupting everything. Quarterbacks don't like guys on their feet. They don't like pressure in their face. And if you watch the highlights in that game, I pointed out, Tyrone Crawford, he ends up rushing on the outside, gets outside of Randy Gregory. There's a lane. Big man, with this low behind, rushes 10 yards for first down. But you see in fourth down and third down situations, Navelle Gallimore. Gillimore. I, I'll never get it right. Forgive me. Lord, forgive me. But he's getting penetration. He is strong enough and quick enough that he's getting across the line of scrimmage and reestablishing it. And now all of a sudden, everybody's praising the big guys in the middle. You want to know why the defense turned around? You want to know why? Because you got pressure in the middle of the field. Because with that guy getting pressure in the middle of the field, that means the guard and the center are getting blown up. The guard can't get and hit Sean Lee or Jalen Smith or Leighton Vander Esch. Those guys can do what they're supposed to do, which is scrape and make the tackle. It's not the defensive line. Because, see, most people, they only look at the fantasy football aspect of stuff. And they see a number like, well, the guy only had three tackles, and he only gets six sacks in a season. <laughs> Who needs that? I need an edge rusher that gets me 15 sacks. I understand you don't understand football. I played nose guard. I remember like it was yesterday in a JV game. I am literally just, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the A-gap. I'm shooting the gap. I'm literally in the quarterback's hip pocket because I was fast, fast. I'm grabbing the quarterback while he's handing the ball. That's how quick line I was in the backfield. And I remember one play, I ended up getting back there, boom, stopped him. Third down, big play. Player, you know, guy, yeah, great job, great job. I come onto the sidelines and I get jacked up by the coach. He's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? I, I'm like, hey, get the tackle and stop it there. That's what I'm doing. He's like, no, 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 no. What was your assignment? I said, I'm supposed to hold up the guard? He said, that's right. By you showboating, by you getting up in there and doing that, you let the guard get back on the linebacker. But, but coach, I made the play. <laughs> I made the play. Yeah, Eight-yard loss. It doesn't matter. You must do your assignment. Because it's the linebackers that are supposed to get the glory. Not the big fat guys. But here's what, uh, the, the reason why I do this is because, like I said, I want to feel good that I got something right for once. And nobody can argue with it. Because, listen, listen, here, this, this, is, this is what I said before the draft. Because this is where it makes you say, damn, Mark, Mark, you were right. I, I, go ahead. I want, you, I want you to say that. I, I want to hear it. Listen. I'm building a team just like we built our offense from the offensive line out for me. I'm building my defense from the defensive line out because for every action, there's a reaction. If we've got a great offensive line that neutralizes the defensive line, then you need to have a defensive line that can neutralize the offensive line. Yes, you know? That's right. For every reaction, there's a reaction. And we haven't had that reaction on our defensive line in forever. Not since now, Leon let. Leon oh, let. I know we got Gerald McCoy, okay? I know we're going to get back. You know, Tyrone Crawford, that maybe we'll end up getting um, Alden Smith. If he's reinstated, we might even get um, Randy Gregory to go with D-Law. But see, for me, I still like that push up the middle. Push, and by push. the way the draft is shaping up in there, I think that you can get the third best prospect out there. And that is, <laughs> you, you know... Vox doesn't like a trash can full of dirt. I say get a roll-off dumpster full of gravel. But we could get maybe a Canadian bulldozer. And that is Navelle Gilmore. This brother. <laughs> you, you talk about putting the brother in. <laughs> this brother is 305 pounds. Mm -hmm. He dropped 25 pounds between 2018 and 2019. Just to make himself a little bit more svelte. You know, so he could really rush the passer. Now, when you look at his numbers, he's got 29 tackles and six and a half sacks. And I know you're going to say, well, six and a half sacks, that's not much. But see, you've got to understand what an interior defensive lineman's job is. It's to get a push up the middle and keep the linebackers clean. 
because if he can get that push up the middle, your outside rushers will then be able to penetrate. If he occupies space and you worry about him, you know, blowing a play up, then that means you're going to double team, which means it keeps your linebackers clean. And more than anything else, a quarterback cannot stand pressure at their feet. This brother bench presses 500 pounds. This brother squats 800 pounds. To put that in perspective, that's literally putting me on each side of the bar. Put uh, two of me. Two of me. That dude's bench pressing two of me. This brother is squatting 800 pounds. 800. That's three and a half of me, bro. This guy not only is strong at six foot two, he's running a four seven nine forty. This is a beast. I want you to watch these highlights. And I can't show the highlights because, of course, the YouTube police were going to. But I, I think I actually have. Uh, hold up. Do, do I have it here? Because I, 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 I want you know, there's some great talent out there, and Vosh Lombardi is one of them. Let, let me see if this is right. Hey, Vosh, we're going to bring you in. You're going to. Oh, damn. It's going Draft. Go, it's going to go to a damn commercial. Ain't that nothing? But Vosh is, um, is one of the best at breaking down film. I wish I had his talents, but here we the go. scheme totally regardless of the talent we got or you just want to uh you know keep doing what we're doing at least till we draft guys that fit what you want to do look at boom i keep doing what we're doing Wait. hold up and i'm kind of sad because because we might win some damn games like this uh, I don't... i'm sorry guys i, I should have had it queued up i want to cry i want to cry listen because uh, i wish okay playing I his gaps Ladies and gentlemen, that's what Sean Lee is doing. What's Neville Gallimore doing? Look, um, slashing, <laughs> penetrating, uh huh, beating blocks. That's right. Getting blazed. <laughs> What's Randy doing? I want to cry. <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> Tears of joy. Because uh, I wish four was it. Look at his defense. Look at his defense. I sincerely feel like the Pittsburgh defense played down the holding he, point. Hold point. Holding point. Look at that. But but see, that's the <laughs> Not difference. Not enough feel like he passed Russia. Shout out to Vosh because you need to watch the whole video in here because he breaks it down. I'm so happy on. to see my defense play this way, dog. I'm elated. <laughs> I'm just el I'm walking on sunshine, man. Don't it feel good? Mm -hmm. Take a look at this play. Hey, this formation looks looks pretty interesting. It's kind of what you know, da da da, boom boom boom. What we've been thinking about in terms of what a three four look would look like. Yep. Interesting Van Der Esch's placement and Randy's placement, which is. Three ten kind of sort, um, but you know Tony Romo kind of alluded to you know, hey, maybe we'll get to a bear front and see what happens. Y'all know Tony Romo got tapped <laughs> on the shoulder by somebody when they did their pregame meeting. Say, yeah, man, we're gonna go for cool. a bear look. But but you see Gallimore in there. We gotta do a little bear look. He's up there taking on the oh double team and holding God. the ground, holding his ground. Look at Antoine his Woods, ladies and gentlemen. Look at look at he's he's ninety nine in the middle right here. Look 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 at Antoine Woods, ladies I'm sorry, and gentlemen. Antoine, got it back. Excuse me. You know you know but what Antoine you, Woods you see is what doing. He's, right doing. Now? he's standing up, doing his job. That's right. Did Antoine Woods make the tackle? No, no. But you know who got in on the tackle? Sean Lee. You want to know why? Why? Because this is the slam jam. Because <laughs> he's taking up blocks and he's doing his job so Sean Lee can make plays. That's it. That that that's exactly. So Sean, but you know what though? That's exactly. That's exactly point on there um, that I want to point out. This is the thing. When you get. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not get carried away. Because look at Sean Lee. Bright, you know what Sean Lee's it. not doing? When you get when the, this guy right here, he's taking on two. He's taking on two right here, holding his ground. Nobody is messing with Sean Lee. He's not getting hurt. He's looking and reading the running back. He's going to go in here and fill. That's his job. But we haven't had guys because what will happen is uh, sometimes we'll get a guy in there. He's getting blown downfield. He's getting blown downfield. He's getting in traffic in our linebackers. This is what I say when I say that a defensive beast 
ends up making everybody else better. Sean Lee can be a better linebacker because he ain't having to shed a block. When you get this guy who's getting upfield in the quarterback's face, that quarterback's got to pass faster, which means as a cornerback, you don't have to hold up. I've been screaming it for year after year after year after year, but nobody in the Cowboys have listened. And this time, they lucked out and got Gillimore later in the draft. And you're already seeing the turnaround on this defense. I'm going to tell you, the difference in this defense is they got rid of some dead weight, Don Terry Poe and stuff like that, and you get a Randy Gregory out there that's now more aggressive and getting upfield, and you got Gillimore in the middle with Antoine Woods getting a push. They are penetrating. They're reading and reacting to get upfield. And I am excited as can be because you're going to add to that Tristan Hill this offseason. You're getting a basis here. Of how the defense should work. All right, that's all I got for you right now, guys. But I just wanted to share some joy and feeling like, you know, let me pat myself on the back because I was right. I was 100% right. And you know I was right. You know I was right. Shout out to Vash Lombardi breaking it down. I'll see you guys soon.